Hello, people of the internet. Welcome to the Painting with Commentary for the Knowles of Marvelous Miniatures T Rex vs. Giant Ape Diorama, episode 49 of Paint to Life. Uh, there's a lot going on in this, and I did it over a couple month period, so strap in and listen to the story. So, this was a very early miniature I painted this dinosaur. As you can see, it was from the Tomb of Annihilation. It was supposed to have orange feathers. I was just learning how to paint, and there he was. I decided it was going to repurpose him for this model when I saw the giant ape fit and said this would fight really well together, as you can see them there. So, I sunk him in the simple green for a while. Uh, like three or four days to strip my old paint job. I'm normally not a fan of stripping old paint jobs because I think it tells a story of our growth, but instead of buying another one for 20 bucks, I just stripped it off. Once it was stripped, I used Wraithbone primer to prime him white. And I started with contrast paint. I was gonna paint them with contrast paints as much as possible. So the contrast paint I used for the T-Rex originally was Wildwood. This is an interesting story. If you manage to follow through my commentary all the way to the end, you might learn something of some failures that I had along the way. I had an idea for this T-Rex. I wanted him to be similar to that of Jurassic Park. So I thought I would start with this Wildwood base to get a nice dark undertone and then I would lighten it up on the edges and on the highlights to, um, to bring out some more of the brown color that you would see in the Jurassic Park T-Rex. Surprise, it didn't work. <laughs> it actually goes worse and worse and worse as we paint through. In the coming uh, minutes of footage here, you'll see. But you'll live and learn. A couple other things to note now while we just watch this guy flop all this contrast paint on here is I couldn't get this T-Rex off the base. It was really on there well. And I decided that, okay, well, some bases aren't just meant to come off. It turns out that triangles are very sound structures um, and as the, te the feet are in triangular shapes, they're glued in really, really well. And ultimately when I said F it and I decided to pull it off anyways, I broke all of his toes off in the process. We'll get to that later when I actually do it. Um, it was easy enough to glue them back on, but sometimes if you're trying to break something off a base, especially if they're triangular shapes, you might expect it not to work as well as you think. So we're finishing up this Wildwood and job well done, <laughs> I guess. So now that it's dry, and this is a, this was back in like November. <laughs> so now I'm gonna use some Sylvaneth Bark, a dry brushing application, just to bring out the browns and leave the undertones as the dark contrast paint. When I say this was in November, I had the idea for this episode a long time ago, but I knew having to paint two full models plus a really engaging base would be very difficult in my weekly paint to life schedule. So I just painted a little bit here, a little bit there, in between all my other paint jobs and work and family and everything. So this was a labor of love for sure. Plus when I heard that T-Rex in Kong was coming out, Godzilla, sorry, Godzilla versus Kong in March, I said, wow. This was my plan to do these two fighting anyways, and in the movie's coming, I can make an homage to the thing, and that was kind of the brainchild of it all. So I'm putting on the Sylvaneth Bark, and I'm like, yeah, this is gonna work. Again, surprise, it doesn't. So now that we've got those two tones, we're gonna put this new color on, and uh, the title card's coming up in a second, which was a lot of work to find all of these colors again, because I hadn't kept track of them. And just bear with me, here it comes. It was Baneblade Brown, okay? I'm layering this thinking, oh yeah, that's cool. What if I layer all the high levels with Baneblade Brown, leaving the underneath the dry brush Sylvanath Bark and below that, the Wildwood, yeah, yeah. Do you guys see a problem with this? One, I'm putting it on too thick, too much, and too everywhere. It's literally, and I'm even how I slow down here, and I'm like, wait a minute, what am I doing? I'm, I'm just trying to, what are you doing, GMA Tank? Are you layering? Are you just trying to paint the highlighted shadowy parts? Are you painting just everything? Because I think what happened was I realized, yeah, I think he looks better this color instead of the darker brown and the Sylvaneth bark. So I think I'm committing to like repainting him again for the third time now. See how much paint is going on? Well, that's a bit of a problem because the concept of having, you know, high, high level tones and mid tones and, and deep contrasts is you should have multiple colors and they shouldn't be fighting for a room. Each one of them has, should have a place on the, the raised areas and the sunken areas. And when you just paint something one color and then you dry brush it another color and then you paint it a third color, all you end up doing is making this mosh of mess. 
as I've done here. And it gets worse because there's still another color to go. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm whispering. It's like 12.30 on Tuesday morning and I'm gonna get this video out for five and I'm working, so I'm not gonna be able to do it. So I gotta get it done before bed. Uh, so now I'm working, you know, oh look, I'm gonna, I got an even lighter brown coming. And I was gonna do that for highlights, if you can imagine. I don't know what I was on. Uh, you can see it's dried into a very muddy look. So this is this new color. I think it's Karak Stone. And again, I see, I'm putting it on the up, the top part, just like I did the past colors. And I'm like, yeah, this looks good, right? It almost looks like the skull, like a bone shining through. Okay. And uh, here comes the title card. Was it Karak? Oh. Rack Earth Flesh. Mm. Oh my word. Surprise, I just remembered there's yet another color to come onto this dinosaur. So, this should never have worked. Remember, it started to be green and orange. I used a simple green to get most of that paint off by soaking it overnight for a couple days and toothbrush scraping, but it didn't all come off. Then I primed it. This is now the fourth kind of paint I'm putting on it. And then, yes, there's even one more. What a mess. So what do we learn from this? We learn as you're painting and you know, some people say this in the commentary, they'll say, Oh, I've, I've bitched it up or I messed up. I did it too dark. I did it too light. Everything's an experiment. Everything's a journey. And you learn every time you do it and make mistakes like this. Clearly I don't because I'm doing the same thing for the fourth time here. I'm going to paint this whole dinosaur, aren't I? I should just skip ahead. What do you say? Should we skip ahead? Yeah, you know what? I'm going to shave some time off this video. Hold on a second. We'll skip to the end of this color. And with the miracles of editing, there he is. Completely gray now. But it gets better. Because here comes that fourth or fifth color I was telling you about, Karak Stone. And it's going to go on yet again. Ah, oh, here it is. Look at that. Look at that. All the other colors before have been completely drowned out now. This was just gonna be like the highlight, I guess. I don't know. And I remember looking at this when it was finished. I think I brought it up to the kitchen table and my son saw it and he just started laughing. He's like, why does the dinosaur look so bad? I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do here? Look at me painting over. So you live and learn. Now this is what I did. At this point, I just said, let's throw it to the wind here. I think we're gonna uh, go ahead and paint his mouth still. Oh, I can't even watch this. How can you guys, you guys should just skip ahead. You know what? I wouldn't even feel bad if you unsubscribed from Paint to Life right now. I get it. I get it. This is, wow. Let's skip ahead more because I can't watch this. I'm going to start to do something terrible to myself. Okay, I'm back. We Pink horror. We're going to get the mouth started. So original. Pink. Here comes the, uh, the pink horror in the mouth. So, yeah, there it is, tongue and all. So here comes the still frame. When it all dried, this is what I had in front of me, right here, and this is what my son saw and basically teased me about. Look at that, isn't that atrocious? So, what do we do now? We say, you know what, let's go a completely different direction. Grab a contrast paint, since I basically reprimed this thing to this dark, soapy, sandy color. And I went with a yellow, a Naz Drag yellow. And as soon as I put it on there, I was like, that looks cool. Instantly, this dinosaur looked not garbage. The contrast paint, even though I have so many layers of different browns on top of there, this yellow being kind of like a brown yellow anyways, oh, I was like, that is, that's surprisingly really cool. It's surprisingly really cool. And the darker sides are still sucking up some of that color and the lighter sides on top of the thighs, it's a little more transparent, it's a little bit lighter. And yes, it's yellow, but when it dries, it kind of keeps some of that brown from underneath sticking through. The, um, it was great. So, yeah, I forgot these. This was a long video. There's a lot of footage in here. Some people like to watch all the footage instead of me speeding through it. So while we watch this for another minute, I'll tell you a fun fact about this episode 49. I didn't put the place placards on like I normally do 
in episode 49 like of what paint was being painted because there was so much going on on the screen with the dice rolls and me narrating the combat between the ape and the t-rex i didn't want more words to come up that's why i'm so far behind tonight because normally i'm done this in preparation for saturday's paint to life episode so all i have to do is narrate this thing but tonight i had to build the whole thing because it was just footage and even worse I trimmed the footage down to seven minutes for the episode, and this was like 50 minutes. So I had to re-trim it for you guys for this painting with commentary. And then I had to uh, watch myself butcher that T-Rex over again. That was, uh, that was sharp. But you know what, again, take your time, enjoy your projects, don't stress, do it when you're having fun. Now, this NASDAQ yellow is all on there. I think it looks like a dinosaur again. And I realize I'm gonna put something on the on this back, and guess what we're gonna put on this back? Back to Wildwood, the very first color we used. Doing it again, but unlike last time. This time I have a goal, a plan. I'm putting it just down his spine. All right, I want a two-tone, but here's what happened, fortuitous. I put too much on. And what happens is it's running down its sides. And at the time, see it running there? And I'm like, ah, oh, no. Too much, too much, except that's what, see how it creeps? See how it's kind of spider webbed in there? And that's when I realized, I don't want to paint this whole thing wildwood again. What if I keep it on top? Yes. But what if I use that dripping to make like tiger stripes down the dinosaur's body? And the more I thought about that, the more I said, that would look really sick. So I just kind of kept going with the natural gravity pull of these drips. And it wasn't tons drips, you can see, see there? just a little bit but it was just enough to show me like ribs and gave me the idea so I'm putting it on the, the top part of his knees the top part of his thighs the top part of his back his skull the rise see just the top though be gentle I don't want to have to do this all over again and once I realized that stripes were in this guy's future we had a dinosaur a little bit of yellow in the eyes with a black pupil dot uh, homage to Jurassic Park fix up that pink horror with some teeth this is all done off camera also filled his mouth with some Liquitex gloss varnish when it's done just to give it a real good licky moist look to it and that was the T-Rex part of this diorama I hope you enjoyed that and whatever that is wild one in the back of his mouth to make it look dark like a black hole yeah on the pink too nice so on to Kong. Big mold lines on Kong. Uh, I filled them in here with green stuff. Oh, green stuff. With green... What? Simple green? No, that's the thing. Whatever. God, what's it called, guys? Liquid green stuff. Yeah, it was green stuff. Interestingly, Grey Seer of the Citadel line is almost the same color that the Vallejo uses on these WizKids models. See how that looks? It just blends in perfectly with the pre-primed ape. So that's why I did this. Um, you will notice there's a pretty bad crease line on the T-Rex's tail. I didn't fill that in because remember I originally painted the T-Rex once before when I was a noob and didn't fill or clean mold lines. The ape was different though. I'm not as big of a noob anymore, just a little bit. So I definitely filled his creases with that green, uh, liquid green stuff. Okay, now we're off to Sigor Brown, starting another contrast paint off of the, um, off of the bat. Not Wildwood. Wildwood was too dark. Sigor has a little bit of red in it, and I wanted our monkey to be a little... Well, I knew he was going to kind of go gray, but I didn't want him to be like black gray, because that would have been too dark. I wanted... You know, do any of you have black cats or dogs? Do you ever see an animal like that lying in the sunlight when they're kind of lounging out? The sun hits it, and even though they're black, their fur, it lights up gray when the sun hits it, even though it could be a black cat. So that was my thought process here. Sigor Brown has got that red, kind of brown look to it. See that? And I'm like, when I do some dry brushing and everything, I want this to still kind of, even though it's going to look like a black ape from a distance, if you look at it up close or in direct sunlight, it'll look brown, and it does. So mission accomplished. Stay away from his hands, stay away from his feet, stay away from his titties, because the flat part of his chest there where there's no hair is going to be a different color altogether. So will his face and his hands and feet. So let's just get around the, the folds, the crotch area. 
And uh, again, I haven't taken them off the base yet because when I originally designed the diorama, they were both going to be on their bases because I couldn't get the T-Rex off. But once I started making the diorama base, I realized I need to get them off these stupid things because they're way too, the T-Rex is especially, it's huge. He's like standing on rocks and stuff. It was the right move. Kong comes off right easy. He just pops off of his feet. But T-Rex, like I said, broke all his toes and we'll see me trimming his nails later to clean that up. So there's the first step in our Kong. That's what the nice thing with these uh, contrast paints are that for basic paint jobs, tabletop ready, contrast paint under the bottle will do you a lot of ju justice. So now we're on to his chest area and hands and face. And this is going to be our go-to favorite gray, Eshin gray. Yeah, boy. So a smooth chest. It goes down to the uh, treasure trail there. I tried to just water it down and blend the Saigor Brown with the Eshin Gray. Uh, around his face, his little ear. The nice thing about this model is there's a lot of forgiveness to it because it's just so fur. I mean, if you just do the whole thing in your fur color with your dry brush, it kind of takes care of itself. It's a very good beginner model, I would say, that ape. Just because the fur also hides any type of mistakes you might make or um, or problems. The only thing that sucks about it is he does have some mold lines right across his knuckles. Really? What a terrible spot for mold lines, right across the knuckles. Because how do you scrape them off? The knuckles in each finger has a little indent. You don't want to be flicking off and breaking his hand. So you just kind of use a knife and work it until you get fed up with it and say, yeah, no one's going to see him anymore. I'm good. Except for all you Crystal Award winning, brush winning painters out there. And there are none listening to this, I promise you. We're all just regular Joes and Joettes who enjoy a good paint and a good story. And, uh, and maybe one day each other's company in a Discord or something. Who knows? As the channel continues to grow. I'm hitting pink horror again in the mouth. That's a good go-to mouth color, but I never leave it plain. You saw me hit it with Dark Oath earlier. I didn't mention it. I might have even used Wildwood. You don't want it. It's so screamy. I mean, look at it. It's just like this big pink blob. I think I used Null Noil on it on the ape because I'm going to use Null Noil on his chest. You want to cut the pink. It's just too intense. All right. So now we're going to use the Gold Flag Brown to dry brush on top of our brown. This is what I was saying. Um, this is going to kind of get light, uh, darkened up later, I think, with something else. I may or may not have caught it on footage. I, I didn't want him to be brown. I wanted him to be black. I just wanted to, you know, I think I like the Saigor brown better than the Golfag brown. It might have been too light. See, that looks like a brown ape. See? So I think I'm going to hit this again with something else. I can't remember what color. I apologize. Maybe it was gray. Or maybe it was the Null Noil, actually. Null Noil might turn all that lightness back to black. Because see, now he looks like he's got a gray chest and a brown body. That's a little weird. Okay, so now we're going to highlight with Dawnstone. So we have these nice big abdomen section, this fur. With the Eshin Gray is very dark. The Dawnstone will bring out the light section. Going to drop some Eshin Gray nipples on those pecs. And Eshin Gray Dawnstone fingernails on the fingers. Touch up the mouth. Some Screaming Skull. Good off-white for teeth. He's got, you know, um, the model's not the greatest for the detail, but uh, the teeth, you should have a different color. So now Null Noil, just to help blend the two areas where they meet, around the face, the sunken parts. Be careful of the teeth. You don't want Null Noil on the teeth. It'll just blacken them out. I think, um, well, be, co be careful anytime you use a shade like Null. Let's see, you put too much on, and you guys have all heard of shadowing or puddles. If you put too much on and it sinks into, you know, let's say that ab there has got a puddle of it. Well, it's just going to turn to a black line and it's going to sink. So you're going to want to keep a paper towel handy. So if you need to, you can just load up your towel, dry off your brush, and then hit it to suck it all up with your brush. And I do like the Citadel Shade Brush. This one I'm using now I've had since I started. Oh yeah, that was it for the ape. Ooh, it's moving right along here. I am getting tired. Now onto the base, Milliput. You can see this is a super big base I bought from Citadel. I knew this was going to be a jungle scene. I wanted a river running between the two combatant, combatants, combatants, okay? But I didn't want it to be flat. So 
I build up on top of it by using milliput. Um, I also marked where the ape and the T-Rex were going to go because I told you they had those big bases, but when ultimately I broke all that apart, it was not such a big deal. So here I am shaping the base to look like a river. When using milliput, use lots of water on your fingers. It makes everything nice and smooth and saucy and it's, you can push it around like this. It's also very messy and it dries like cement. So if you get any on your cutting pad underneath there or on your tools and you leave it overnight, not catching it before it cures, it will be almost impossible to get off. So be warned. And you probably have some tools you want to use to help shape when you're sculpting with this stuff. So don't forget to clean them off extremely well. So the last time I did a river like this, I did one in episode four or five, Arborgast, the tree, the treant. And I also did one for Blackheart, the black dragon. And there was another one I did a river, but yeah, I've learned a few things with using the acrylic water. It's called Realistic Water from Woodland Scenics. It's a great product, but it shrinks when it dries. And this is what I was about to get to. These banks, these are river banks. So I'm making these noodles along the bank just to give some resistance to the river. So when the river is poured and it fills up this river area, you don't want it pouring into your jungle and making like a little lake beside the river. So you're gonna put a bank on the river and make sure it's high enough and it has a lip that goes all the way from edge to edge. You smooth it out with your finger, you can make it look natural, but it needs something or else it'll just take the path of least resistance just like water and it'll flow right into your lowlands. <laughs> you have all this fake grass on there and all this cool stuff and it'll just be covered in water. And when it dries, maybe that's the effect you're going for. So here we are to dry fitting and you can see I did this out of order. As I told you, so Kong hasn't even been painted yet in this version. The ape was still primed and the T-Rex was still not ridiculous looking. Uh, so it was, this was probably earlier in the project I just, uh, yeah, that's true. So, you know, a lot of this stuff takes time, right? Milliput takes four to eight hours to cure and dry hard. Um, so again, I just worked on this a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here. It was a work in progress. Some eagle eye viewers might have even spotted these pieces in the background of Paint to Life episodes. Sometimes people email me and say, hey, are you doing a this? Because I saw it on your shelf and I'm like, well, aren't you perceptive? You get inspiration. Yes, I am doing one of those. And this guy, these T-Rex, etc., was definitely hanging out there for a long time. Now, as this video rolls out in the next 12 minutes, um, oh, this is a useless step. Here I am painting the base, preparing it. Like I want this, this river. And I was just saying this earlier, the other times I've done rivers, if you do your base right, even though you only have like a mill, like you've got like what, a quarter of an inch or a eighth of an inch of, of this water substrate, substrate, if you paint it well, it'll look deeper than it actually is. And I'm trying to do that right now by painting the brown and then I'll do a darker brown and a darker, but uh, this all gets wasted. This step right here m basically made that thing look, the two, these two colors for like a month and a half, because as we'll see in the coming steps, it's all gonna get over covered with, with my excitement. <laughs> so as I was saying, this base, I try to cover as much st much stuff as I put on here as I did with t placards and explanations, but some things were missed. But really, I shouldn't have to tell you everything that went onto a base. If you see something on my base, you want to know where I got it or what it is, please email me. But if you can't tell what it is, you should just make your own base. This is The bases are the most fun. Look, I took a cork board here, a piece of cork. I ground it up into chunks. And I kind of pulled around. Now I put this, this glue mixture. It's two parts water to one part glue. You can use Mod Podge as well. Split this over everything like Frank's Red Hot. And then start to put your chunks on where you want them to be. Usually when doing chunks, you want to have big chunks, medium sized chunks, and whittle chunks with a W. So that ground up cork was my big. This little brown battlefield is my medium. And one thing is I got it all over the river in the middle and I'm trying to paint it 
to the sides. I want there to be texture, but it should be on the sides, not the center. Because remember I said, I want the center to look like it's super deep. So I pushed all this to the side. Um, and then I'm going to put some sand on it too. That's the tiniest particulate and it'll round it all out. So now you can imagine why I'm going to lose those colors that I put down there already. Here's the sand, good old sand. Because I'm going to paint all this and all that green and brown I did is gone. Real quick before I forget, no, I'll say it at the end. Remind me at the end if I forget. I just want to talk about the, uh, the list of everything that's in this episode. Okay, so here's the finished look of my base. You got a nice rock on there, um, a piece of wood, a stone standing up in the center. And it was a real mess, a real mess to make this. Look at my workstation as I'm preparing to base this. It was quite the uh, adventure. This is where you should find your joy. This is your happy place. There's the T-Rex and the ape. This is where you want to have the most fun, creating a, a fun base. So now that I got all those cool colors and textures on there, I'm going to prime them. I don't always do this. Sometimes I let the natural colors stay. Um, one of my YouTube uh, partners, Leif from Devs and Dice, he does this all the time. And I always watch him and go, oh, I like the natural color better, but I get it because you have to paint it, bro. That's what we're here to do. So I paint it up, I prime it. And now that I have this airbrush, I like to use it for things like this. So Dark Oath F Flesh, it's a contrast paint. And again, I'm just going to apply some in various intensities. I want to build this base up with my airbrush. Um, and try and get natural looking colors via paint rather than just luck of what nature provided. Oh boy, there's a yawn. So I'm keeping it out of the, um, the, the middle as much as I can for the, you know, cause I have other plans for that. And you don't need an airbrush to do this. Yes, I'm obviously applying it gently and lightly and building up different colors, but you can do it with a brush. I use my airbrush because it saves time and I have it. Now I'm switching to Wildwood again. That's a common contrast paint you see how much darker it is. I'm putting in shadows behind some of the rocks using this. So when it's all done, you know, the, the ridges are going to have some deeper lines. I'm painting the actual river itself to be very dark in the center, as you can see there. And um, see, now I'm going to paint some shadows on them. I picked the direction of a light source and decided that's where the shadow is going to come from and I sprayed some on. So we have also random outdoor sticks on this. We also have pieces of bark on this. When the weather gets nicer, go outside, get some Ziploc bags, go for a hike and collect stuff. You'll love it. So much stuff out there in the wild that you can use. There's some wild grass from Woodland Seen Noah from, I don't know, whatever that company logo was that passed by. My monitors went out. And I also use some black Templar for the sides and the real dark parts. So just a quick line up the middle of the dark water there. Um, the sides of the rocks where the shadow is going to be, you know. So now even though I primed it all, it looks quite natural. So we're going to dry brush it with gold fag brown just to pick up some of the highlights of the, uh, the textures. And those little white things are skulls. They're orc skulls from uh, Green Stuff World. I painted them with writhe bone and I'll eventually skeleton hoard them. They look like monkey skulls, actually. So I figured this would be where Kong and the T-Rex fight and maybe the baby Kongs have been eaten here before. There was a couple others in the water that got lost, so. So now we're trying this white glue with this static grass applicator, which doesn't work very well for me, but whatever I tried it's a light green foliage from green stuff world you don't need a static grass applicator what you need to do is be patient apply it turn it upside down and tap the bottom of the base vigorously so that all the pieces kind of fall and stand up right so here I am I've broken the t-rex's feet I'm trimming the bottom of his feet to make them flat and gluing his toes back on ta-da that's what I said I was gonna do you guys earlier and there they are kind of roughed in where they're gonna go on the grassy base. And that's the first coat of grass. I put lots of tufts on there too. Other colors of grass. It's a jungle, guys. Mwah. It's a jungle, guys. Use your imagination. Put whatever you want on that base. You should. It'll look nice. So, these are some uh, fika. Fika, also known as flake, flake, fake plants from Ikea. They sell different kinds. I picked these two. 
They were like seven bucks each, and they were really cool for this particular project. I cut them into pieces, I put them in a stick, sticky tack, I primed them. Don't just use the regular plastic, it'll look silly. It'll look very fake plastic treesy. So here you go, it's primed, and then I'm gonna paint them. So now I'm using, um, here we are with Plague Bear Flesh. It's a contrast paint. It's got a nice yellow green. It's the first coat. Um, I had a cool idea while painting that frond. I'm making ferns out of that leaf. These things were going to be little trees, which I didn't end up using that much. But the ferns were cool because the fern leaf, I create little ferns of that are perfectly scaled to look like monstrous jungle ferns. So we'll see those in a second. But I'm still priming these up, putting some Militarium Green on them. And then also some Warp Fiend Glow, or whatever it's called. That's the next ticket. Oh, I spilled some under my airbrush there. Yeah. Warp Lightning. Yeah, I could have probably done a better job priming that front. In fact, I don't think I used that fern leaf there. I think I got rid of it and did another one. So, lots of different greens. You know, jungles have all kinds of cool green contrasts. And you know, you have a bunch, you can use them or, or not. And you know, I still have the plant for next time and it makes my office look good. So I used a lot of hot glue to put everything on this just for the sake of time. This took oh so long to do this base. Everything needed to set, the, the water needed to set, all the stuff I put on it needed to set and dry. Here's me creating one of those ferns I told you about using the different color leaves and hot glue to assemble it all. I put a dab of hot glue and stuck all the leaves into it and then when it was dry I just picked it off of my mat and I picked the little fern up and set it down on the uh, diorama just like here. Poop. There it is. Oh, that looks cool. I dried them up again just to test and I'm putting some tape down for my water pour. Brought it closer to the camera. So here's the tape. Use something hard. It's just masking tape. Use something hard and press very hard against that tape. You don't want any cracks because all that needs to do is act as a dam so that the water we're pouring in there doesn't pour out. Since we built the lip down the riverside, we know that it's not going to come out there. But you really see I'm pressing down and pressing hard, 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 really get that max masking tape to adhere. That way you know it's not going to leak and mine didn't and it worked. And then once it's cured, you tear the tape off and you have little teeny natural dams. And that's that. <coughs> Excuse me, cough, cough. Couldn't mute myself, but we're almost through and I'm tired. So that's what it looks like. There's your dam. All right, now the Woodland Scenics, realistic water, gently pour it. You don't want bubbles, so you just pour it gently and let it kind of creep on its own. You can use a prodding stick to help it get to places. And I, when this is dry, I should tell you, I did paint it Pterodon, Pterodon Turquoise is the final contrast paint color I used. It looks kind of cloudy blue right now. That's just because it's wet. It will dry and uh, it will be perfectly clear when it dries. It will also shrink. And your wife will say, why don't you put more in? And it'll take another 12 hours, even though you're supposed to be filming. Here it is for the shelf. <laughs> Anyways, guys, that has been a very long yammer. I hope you enjoyed it. If you made it through the end, bonus DKP for you. Let's take a look at the finished diorama. So here is picture number one, Kong and the Rex. You can see all the little pieces of the scenery that I put on there, different colors of tufts, different sizes, different types of branches. I'm going to zoom this picture in actually after I'm done recording this uh, so you can see a little better. Here we go again, slightly different angle. There's some wood in there. The natural wood pieces you find on your hike that I told you about can be stained using the contrast paint. You can paint them to get different colors out of them. It's awesome. Also, I remember I used the Liquitex in their mouths to give them very moist looking sal saliva mouths. All right, and oh, what's that? You wanted to remind me something? Oh, that's right. I didn't have a chance to do a here's everything involved in this painting with commentary video, so I apologize. I just ran out of time and it didn't happen this week. So you can see that beautiful water there. Um, I also used some teasing effect with my brush to make it look like rapids, different colors to make it. You know, I didn't want it to be straight blue, but I didn't want it to be brown. So I used the, t the turquoise and teased it to make it look like rapids. And folks, there are the stripes on the side of the T-Rex that started as an accident, and I love it. So, 
Thank you very much for walking, watching. Thank you very much for watching this episode. Uh, your constant support to Paint a Life means a lot to me. Email me if you want to ask any particular questions about it. I would be glad to respond. It's paintalife at gmail.com, and I am going to bed. Thank you very much for watching. I'm GMA Tank. Wash your hands, people. We'll see you next time.